What's happening guys, I'm TechSource. Welcome back to another episode of Setup Wars. This is the first episode of the year. I hope everyone had a great start to the new year. If you haven't set a new year's resolution, now's the time. Let me know what you guys wanna achieve this year in the comment section down below and save this video. That way you can come back at the end of the year and see if you're any step closer to your goal. But yeah, with that said, sit back and relax. I got a jam packed episode for you guys. Let the Setup Wars begin. Season 8 TechSource mouse pads are finally available. We got Space, Hex, Kyoto, Dusk, Dawn, and three different colors of Erupt. Check them out at dealsource.tech store or click the link below. Kicking off the episode, we got Jacob, who's a college student from Georgia. It took him a total of two years to build this for schoolwork and gaming, and he built it using two walnut countertops to form an L desk. For the primary monitor, he's using a 34 inch ultrawide that he mounted against the wall, while the secondary 27 inch is hooked up to the desk. Yet again, we are seeing this layout with the monitor spaced out apart to make room for the speakers, but I also like that he added a riser underneath to bring up the speaker height, and it's also a nice platform to keep some of his other gear organized. For peripherals, he's using a SteelSeries Apex Pro TKL that's paired with a Razer Basilisk, and during gaming, he brings out the HyperX Cloud Stingers and the Siren Mini Microphone for audio input. Looks like we have a Signum rack under the desk to help out with cable management and a ton of cable clips were used to group them together. I like how the PC doesn't take up a lot of space on the desk. It's an H1 build with some pretty decent specs. We have an i7 10700K paired with an MSI RTX 3060. It's definitely got enough juice to keep up with the 144Hz ultrawide. The 3D art panels with the neon RGB strips is a nice touch to add a bit of decor, but it's been done many times before. If you really want to separate your setup from the crowd, try and come up with something more unique. You can even use the same stuff that you already have, but create a different pattern with it to stand out. It's still a pretty sick setup to start off the show. Nonetheless, thank you Jacob for sharing this with us. This next setup is such an amazing example of space optimization. I always hear people complaining about not having enough space to build their dream setup. You'll be surprised at how much space you actually need for a fully functioning setup. In order to successfully execute a setup like this, measurements need to be very accurate, you guys. So that's why I recommend starting off with a simple 3D model or at the very least, take down the measurements of the space and compare those measurements with the gear that you're buying. You can tell Jacob definitely planned for all of this, seeing as how precise everything is. I mean, the length of the desk matching the exact width of the wall to the shelves up top. I mean, everything just fits so well like a glove. Also, the setup looks full and complete, yet it's not cluttered because everything is organized and spaced out very well. We got a single 32 inch 270 Hertz monitor hooked up against the wall, freeing up some extra space underneath to store some of his other gear. We also got a Corsair K65 RGB mini keyboard and an extra fee M4 mouse with clean cable work through the desk and in two-way power strip where everything is plugged in. The rest of the bulky cables and power strips are actually hidden in a cable box that he put underneath the desk. It's crazy how much effort he has put in the cable management here. If streamers like Nadia put in half the effort that Josh put into his setup, this world will be a much better place. Looks like Jacob doesn't have any speakers for the setup and instead use the extra space to add a couple of Philips Hue light towers for some lighting. Dude, these things are $220 a piece. Don't tell me you spent $440 on a pair of lights. Please tell me that you got them as a gift because I know where that $440 could have gone to. A better GPU. You currently have an i7 11700K paired with an RTX 3070. And while the PC looks amazing, you're not taking advantage of your monitor's resolution and refresh rate. You have a Quad HD 270Hz monitor, my guy. A 3070 is not strong enough to push games on that monitor. You could have used that extra money and upgraded to an RTX 3080 Ti instead. The Paladin RTX 3080 Ti would have not only performed way better than your 3070, and would have matched your PC's color scheme, but you would have had $480 left over to spend on anything you want. So technically, you still could have bought the light bars if you wanted to. Personally, I would have used that money towards some really nice custom cables for the PC, but that's just me. The only audio source for the setup are the Corsair Virtuosos with the built-in mic, although I think a pair of Creative Pebbles V3 
would fit beautifully with the setup. You can put them right underneath the monitor and it will match the colors nicely. The white color will go well with the wall and the gear, while the brown accents will complement the desk. Regardless, I would say that this is hands down my favorite setup so far of the year. It's so simple, yet effective and beautifully executed. There's definitely some questionable choices without a doubt, but I love the direction of the setup and there's definitely potential to improve. Thank you, Jacob, for blessing our eyes with this setup. We have not seen a desk PC setup for such a long time. I think the last one belonged to Muckman from episode 221 over two years ago, who also ended up taking on the seal of approval, but we haven't really seen any since then. Well, two years later, and we have another PC desk battle station, except this one belongs to Paul, who's an MMA coach from BC, Canada. And I poop you not, you will never guess what the setup's primary purpose is. It's not for productivity or watching or streaming content. Hell, it's not even used for gaming. Paul spent eight months building the setup to provide a nice backdrop for his YouTube videos. I can't make this up. That's literally what he wrote in the notes. That is the ultimate flex. In fact, this entire corner of the room was custom made just for a backdrop. The false walls, the beams, the decoration, the lighting, the whole theme was based on Asian culture around the Bronze Age, which also gives off a pretty cool steampunk look as well. This entire thing is basically a very expensive set for his YouTube videos, but we'll get more into that in a bit. Even the monitors are there purely for a backdrop. There's a 49 inch super ultra wide underneath a 48 inch 4K OLED TV. Jesus. The desk was custom made by Paul and it was inspired by the original Lian Lee DK05 desk. There are a lot of similarities like the shape of the desk and the legs, but he added a few extra features of his own, like quick access to both compartments on each side of the desk, where he keeps his power supplies and most of the cables. But the coolest feature of this desk is definitely the built-in hydraulic lid that is controlled with the button on the side. Inside here, we have two separate systems, one for gaming and one for streaming. And I like how each system has its very own colors. The left gaming system has a 12 nanogen k with the Gigabyte Vision RTX 3090, while the streaming PC has a Ryzen 9 3950X with an ROG Strix RTX 3080 Ti. Both very high-end systems capable of playing any game and streaming. But wait a minute, Ed. You said Paul doesn't use this setup for gaming. Well, that's only half true. You see, Paul doesn't physically game at the setup, but instead uses the PC to power the games he does play on a giant screen. So this is where he plays and streams his VR and racing sim games to his audience. And it's one hell of a setup as well. I mean, he built these pretty cool beams on the ceiling where he routed the cables from the setup to the green screen area, and there's even a pole in the middle that he's able to move around with him. There's an extra monitor, a Go XLR, PS4, and the camera that's used to capture A-roll. That is one very impressive setup. I just wish you took the photos on the A6600 instead of your potato phone, but it's not a big deal. Thank you, Paul, for sharing this awesome battle station with us. I'm not sure what exactly caught my eye first here. The cool dragon scale looking panels on the wall or the dual mirrored Lee and Lee gaming PCs. Either way, this setup has my full attention. So this setup belongs to Robin coming all the way from Germany. He's an electrician for alarm systems and it took him about 50 hours to build this setup for the purpose of gaming, streaming and content creating. The setup is built on a custom tabletop that's being supported by two Alex units, but it looks like there is a headboard of some sort hooked up against the wall where the dragon scale panels are attached to with a few Gobi glide bars up top for lighting. He did make some space on the headboard to mount all three of his monitors. We got 27 inch displays with 160 Hertz Quad HD in the middle from Asus. I actually really like how he mounted his streaming gear. So check this out. The Elgato key light and the camera are hooked up to the monitor arm using articulating arms while the mic is attached underneath the monitor. I really love this look. It's so clean. Everything is floating, all the cables are hidden because he ran them through the headboard and tucked them away behind the Alex units. Moving on to peripherals, he's using an ROG Strix scope keyboard with two pairs of mice, the G Pro Superlight for the gaming PC and the Rocat for the streaming PC. So it looks like he's definitely using a USB switch with his keyboard to swap between both of his systems. Speaking of which, we got the gaming PC over on the right side and it is one hell of a system. Jesus, that looks gorgeous. We have a 12700KF paired with an ROG Strix 3080 
and I just love how consistent he is with the color scheme. Even going as far as to add a white USB 3 adapter cable to replace the black one. Excellent choice of parts, no doubt. On the opposite side, we have the streaming PC that's equipped with a 10700KF and an RG Strix 1050Ti. While the colors are not as consistent as the gaming PC, it's still a very clean build, no doubt. He also has a PS4 tucked underneath the tabletop for when he wants to play console games. So overall, I love the aesthetic of the setup. I really do. I think Robin brought over a few new elements that I haven't seen in a setup before, and it's very refreshing to see something different. But I feel like it wasn't executed properly. There was such a missed opportunity to do something really cool with those dragon scale panels, like come up with a nicer design to complement the setup. It looks very sloppy and all over the place. Some areas extend longer than others, while some spots are missing panels. I mean, I love the idea, but I think you could have done better. Another area that could have been improved are the alignment of the monitors. I mean, it's not as noticeable to the untrained eye, but you can definitely see the middle monitor is lower than the other two. Instead of having to drill through your wall a second time to adjust the height of your monitor, I would recommend picking up a VESA adapter instead. In fact, I mentioned this exact thing in the last Cooltech video where you're able to adjust the height of the monitor so easily without having to drill extra holes. Give it a watch if you missed it, I highly recommend it for anyone who has wonky monitors. Other than that, I love the setup. I really do, it's got so much potential to become something better. The pegboard is a nice addition for extra storage and decoration, and the custom RGB logo on the ceiling is a great way to add some personality to the setup. Thank you Robin for sharing this with us. What would happen if you give a die-hard Star Wars fan $40,000? Well, it will look something like this. A fully decked out man cave guaranteed to keep you entertained through another pandemic, should it ever happen again. I don't care who you are, where you're from, this is every gamer's paradise. I got over 100 pictures sent over for this submission and a freaking spreadsheet with the products listed along with their price and the link to the product. Are you freaking kidding me right now? I got respect for this guy already. Imagine bringing over a girl and showing her your big shiny sword. Or hell, the entire collection in the dining room. If that doesn't drop her panties, I don't know what will. Did I mention it's got RGB? So yeah, this is pretty much the living room area. That's the first thing you see when you walk into Ryan's home. A smart TV with a few consoles all mounted against the wall with a one-to-one -one replica of Cloud Sword from Final Fantasy VII hanging right above the TV. Right across from that is the dining room area, which looks like a set straight from a Game of Thrones episode. If you ever wanted to know what it felt like dining in the Roman Empire, this is as close as you can get. If you're lucky enough to get past the dining room, then you get to see Ryan's happy space. A high-end battle station on one side and an entertainment setup on the other with a super cozy bed, which is perfect for a bit of Netflix or chill, Disney Plus or Thrust, maybe some Hulu and Do You, or even some Amazon Prime and have some fun time. Regardless of what you choose to do, Ryan's got the lighting to set the mood for you. So what is all this for anyways, you might ask, and how long did it take Ryan to complete the setup? Well, for starters, Ryan is a software developer from Florida who built the man cave in a span of eight months because he wanted a place where he can just chill and hang out playing games and also get some work done. We have a quad monitor layout for the main setup. Triple 27 inch 4K displays on the bottom with a 34 inch ultra wide up top. And for the MacBook setup, he's got another 4K monitor hooked up. For peripherals, he's using a Corsair K95 Platinum with two pairs of mice, the Glaive RGB Pros and the Dark Core for backup. It's nice to see that even with the overwhelming amount of gear, Ryan still cares about the cable management. He made a few cutouts to help route the wires from the peripherals and the mouse pad through the desk while the rest of the cables underneath the desk are hidden behind the backboard. I thought this was pretty cool. He added a shelf underneath the table to separate some of his gear and keep them hidden. We got his router, an external hard drive, and a NAS system with 56 terabytes of hard drive space. The laptop setup is powered by a MacBook, while the main battle station is powered by a custom PC featuring the i9 9900K and an RTX 2080 Ti. Considering you have triple 27 inch 4K monitors, I would definitely recommend upgrading your GPU at some point. The fact that the PCI cables have RGB already should tell you how obsessed Ryan is with RGB. If you couldn't already tell by the entire room, of course. Tons and tons of lightsabers are added to the walls with RGB strips, nanoleaf panels. I mean, this guy has it all, along with a pretty hefty electric bill, I assume. I really hope your home is equipped with solar, my guy. In fact, here are all the remotes that he uses to control the lighting in his room, although he mostly uses Google Voice to activate the lights in the room anyways. 
So there are two more entertainment setups that he built. There's one right behind his main setup that's mostly used to play on retro consoles like the original NES and Super Nintendo, while the main entertainment area is set up in front of his bed, where he can kick back and watch movies or game on his PS4. There is a buttload of collectibles across the room, ranging from Star Wars helmets to figurines and even some Final Fantasy stuff, but you guys get the idea. A very impressive 40 grand man cave, no doubt. Thank you, Ryan, for sharing this with us. As always, guys, I appreciate your time. Let me know in the comment section which of these setups was your absolute favorite. And if you guys are new here, consider subscribing because I do host Setup Wars every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Can't tell if my shirt's small or if I've put on some weight, to be honest. Maybe a little bit of both. Who knows? Who knows?